The Great Barrier Reef is showing substantial signs of recovery, according to a new Australian government study. Since 2016, coral bleaching damaged or destroyed 30 percent of the roughly 1,400-mile-long reef. The study also suggests the full impact of the bleaching is yet to be fully known. Joining me now to discuss more of the reef's recovery is Dr. Mark Aiken. He is the coordinator for the NOAA Coral Reef Watch, and he joins me via Skype from Silver Spring, Maryland. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Can you remind us what coral bleaching is exactly, and could you also walk us through what a healthy coral reef might look like as opposed to a bleached reef? Certainly, and we'll start with actually with what a coral is, because most people don't understand that a coral is animal, vegetable, and mineral. Uh, a coral is, the coral reefs are made up of these tiny little polyps, all of which are like an upside down jellyfish. And those coral polyps have in them microscopic algae that live inside their tissues and help them create the big skeleton, the reef that you see from, uh, from above. Bleaching occurs when the temperature gets too high and it causes these corals to expel those algae, leaving them weak, leaving them starving, leaving them injured. And so this is what causes the problem. If it's a short-term event, the corals can recover from the bleaching, but if it's a long-term event or really severe event, you have a lot of mortality. You're seeing here in some of this imagery the, uh, uh, the, the coral where it's extremely bleached and some patches of it even dead already. And uh, this has been a huge problem that caused the death of uh, 50 percent of the corals in the Great Barrier Reef over a two-year period, both 2016 and 2017 combined. So if, if coral is bleached, there is still a chance of recovery. What, when it's dead, though, that's it. That's right. A bleached reef, you know, a bleached coral is injured. You know, it definitely needs to be in the hospital, but there's no okay. hospital to take them to. But if it lasts long enough, then the corals are going to die. And that's what really breaks down the basis of this important ecosystem. So now the Australian government study is saying the reef is showing signs of recovery. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, signs of recovery means you go out and you're seeing that some of it's coming back. You, you have some corals that died, that there's some tissue coming back on it. It's really too early to say how much of that is going to be recovering in the near term. The more important thing is how long is it going to be until the next bleaching event like this? Because these bleaching events are coming much more frequently. And it, as they come more frequently, the coral reef doesn't have time to recover. So what is to blame for this bleaching? Is this about climate change or is it, is it about a host of factors? The bleaching is 100% about climate change. This large scale bleaching that occurred in this case from 2014 to 2017, we had three years of coral bleaching. And during that time, there were corals dying all over the world. This is being caused by high temperatures, and those high temperatures are a result of climate change. So it's all being driven by the excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's just devastating to hear this. And remind us of the environmental impact of losing a coral reef this significant. Yeah, coral reefs are extremely important. They protect shorelines. And when you have something like a hurricane coming ashore, if it's coming into a place where there are coral reefs, they are protecting the shoreline. There's a major typhoon that just uh, came into Guam and, and the coral reefs were protecting it. These are important fisheries. They're important for tourism. On the Great Barrier Reef alone, it's worth about $6.4 billion a year and 64,000 jobs. And it's a trillion dollar resource globally. So these are very important ecosystems that we can't stand to lose. And moving forward, what else do you think can be done to protect these coral reefs? Well, the most important thing we have to do is we have to start moving away from fossil fuels and we have to move to a, a completely renewable-based energy system. I mean, that's, that's number one, because if we don't keep down the warming, we're not going to be able to do anything else. Uh, you know, the rest that we do won't make any difference. Mark. But in, it, yes? Sorry, finish. Sorry, go ahead and finish. Yeah, I was going to say, but, uh, but as long as we're doing that, dealing with climate change, we can also be dealing with some of the key issues like runoff, overfishing, destructive um, uh, practices. Uh, and and uh, in the Great Barrier Reef, they're dealing, of course, with the issue of crown of thorn starfish, and uh, they're trying to remove those as well. Such an important issue. Mark Aiken, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you.